crafting these experiences across operating systems, I don't have to learn a new programming language, don't have to use new tooling. All the things that I know and love are there, and it's just a checkbox. And that gives you everything that you possibly need. You're done. You're done. This is Richard Campbell from Donna Rocks and Run As Radio. I'm here on the Microsoft campus and we're doing this great visual studio series. And I had an opportunity to talk to my friend James Montemagno. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you as well. Super good to be here back on campus. Uh, and it's, you know, a powerful time. There's so many cool projects going on, but you and I have known each other a long time. You were a Xamarin guy back in the day and got pulled in on a .NET Rocks road trip many years ago. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, that was actually kind of like mid-career for me <laughs> when I was a... Uh, I uh, became a mobile developer and then jumped over to Xamarin to be a developer advocate and help people. And yeah, that was my first gig. My first like week was going in like, hey, we're gonna hop you on the road across America with uh, these Donnet Rocks guys. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're, gonna I'm do getting, what? we're doing what was happening. And you know, I like never publicly spoken before and we were traveling doing cool stuff and it was- I made a show every day. Every day. Right? Every day, like a machine. It, it was, was a blast. It was a lot of fun. You've always worked in C Sharp. Like I think you've worked in every flavor of C Sharp I can think of because Certainly the Xamarin flavor C Sharp is one thing, but Silverlight too? A little bit of everything. You know, mm. I got really, really lucky uh, growing up where I had a programming class in high school. You know, I'm a 80s kid, 86. I was really lucky that at the end of my high school, I had a teacher that was teaching software engineering uh, and we were using C++ and Visual Studio. And it kind of invigorated my mind that like this is what I want to do. And I was kind of coding websites at home in my spare time. And I just kind of get into that phase. But once I actually sat down, I started building programs that could do stuff mm -hmm. like at the you know, terminal console. I was like, this is amazing. And once I jumped then to college where I went for game programming, I had a teacher that introduced me to C Sharp. And it was like a light bulb that had gone off. Now was, was that like Unity amazing. for game programming? At the time, everything for C Sharp and C++, everything that we were doing was custom mods, custom engines, custom oh, right. everything. This was this is like, you know, 2000, mid 2000s, yeah. uh, where there were a few game engines out there. The studio I worked with, we built our own game engine. This was pre-XNA. Right, uh, right. So this was early days, and I was building games professionally in C++, but really at this game studio I was working at, they were like, hey, we really need a tools developer. And a right. tools developer builds tools for the balancers, for the designers. Yeah. And this teacher in college, Phil Miller, who I'll remember forever, introduced me to C Sharp. And he was like, this is object-oriented programming. This is C Sharp. And the first time I went into Visual Studio, started writing code, and the IntelliSense engine lit up. And it was just like, it just made sense to me. Right. I went back to the studio, and I was like, I'll be your tools program. <laughs> started writing WinForms apps, doing everything with DirectX inside of WinForms for the designers. And I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. Is and did, would you skip back to C++ in the studio as well? Because I guess you have that option. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's really fun to go back. I pull out some old floppy disks that mm -hmm. I have sitting around. This is one of my favorite memories of like a year ago when I was moving. I pull out some floppy disks and I have that USB to floppy disk. And so you, you still can have a working at. drive. So I mean, that's working problem drive. number one. Yep. <laughs> and I plop it in and I have a bunch of old like C++ code that's sitting around and some old WinForms code that's just like, I don't know, framework one to one or something. I literally go and I open these projects and like Visual Studio 2022, and they just work. They just open. And they open, and like, here it is. Now, of course, I don't think I was uh, capping my frames rate uh, at that time. Oh yeah, so we, things that would have been a problem. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> things are running wild, but it was like just a magical moment to see all this work from my grade school and my college years yeah. come back to life. And yeah, that was really neat working at the game studio because I actually wrote a tool that our designers could use, drop in their assets, their mm -hmm. graphics, they could tweak all things. It was a top-down space shooter. They could basically take those assets and put them in the game, right. but I also needed code. Yeah. So I had the C Sharp WinForms app export C++ code, so I didn't have to write the C++ code. <laughs> all the stubbing around those assets would exactly. go with it. Exactly, yeah, it was, it was Code brilliant. generation in C Sharp. It was, it was early co-pilot in action. I love it, that's so funny. Yeah. And now, obviously the Xamarin thing was all about mobile. I mean, that's where they started. And those were not easy times to write common code between both iOS and Android. Like, that's not a simple thing to do. Yeah, you know, I got into mobile development because I actually came to PDC, which was before Build, right, right. here on campus. I was, I was uh, working, 
uh, at Canon, uh, writing printer software right. down in Arizona. And they sent me up here on campus and we got uh, WinPhone at the time, Azure yep. was, was launching. PC 2010. Yep, I went back to my hotel room, I started writing a podcast application, because I was podcasting, and still am, and I went back and I was like, this is the future, of mobile applications. And they're like, ah, we don't know, it seems early. And I was like, no, this is what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. And I found a job up here in Seattle, moved my entire life, and my first day on the job, you'll remember this very, yep. very famous, is I went in my office, my boss came in and said, hey, you got two months, to build three applications for Windows, iOS, and Android, go. And I'd never written an iOS app, never written an Android app or anything at all. And I started prototyping, looking, finding around, and I found Xamarin tooling to build right. iOS and Android apps and share that code with my Windows applications all in C Sharp. And it was, again, it was like the sky's open. It was like that light bulb moment to yeah, me yeah. again. It's like when I found C Sharp again, but now I'm literally writing it for the device in my pocket. I was an Android user for years now, iOS. But like, I was just like, this is amazing uh, to be able to craft these applications. And that's what I've now been doing for like 13 years. Yeah, which is how that, how that happened. <laughs> so it. the road trip was 2012, but it's always been Visual Studio then for yeah. you. That, that was that place that you could do all of these different kinds of, of application development. I find it fascinating because it means you just keep building on your skills. Your C sharp skills keep getting better. Your tooling skills keep getting better because you can bring everything in that you need. Yeah, I think that was the thing that really sold me on it. Like obviously moving from just building desktop applications mm -hmm. uh, that I was doing at Canon at the time, I was also building web apps and Silverlight apps as well. Right. We're all using Visual Studio, keeping everything in there, sharing code between all of our projects. So I think when I sat down for the very first time and installed all the Xamarin tooling, and I saw that I could reuse all of my extensions, all the ecosystem, all the power of Visual Studio to now build for a non-Microsoft platform, it mm -hmm. kind of like just blew my mind. It yeah. really was like, wow, this is awesome. And yet I'm using this amazing tooling that I know. I don't have to learn a new programming language, don't have to use new tooling. All the things that I know and love are there, which means I'm just super productive, right? right. Didn't have that long ramp up. Well, you still pieces you have to learn about the APIs for the platform. Absolutely, like, yeah. You can't get away from that, but you know the debugger. Yeah. You know, you know the dev environment, you know how to deploy, like things should be pretty good. Yeah, you know, the great part about Visual Studio and in this ecosystem of building multi-platform apps is there's a lot to it, like you're saying. There's mm -hmm. the stuff that's in the platform, but there's the stuff around the yeah. platform, right? You got emulators and simulators and you got SDK management, you got just creation of those virtual devices and plugging in your devices and deployment. What was great is as the tooling evolved over the years and where it's at today is just like night and day difference, just astonishing is it's all there for you, right. right? It's just really there from writing your first code to deploying it to the store. Yeah, absolutely. If there is something you want people to learn, that I mean, with lots of folks who are watching this that you already use Studio, but we know there's so much in it. Yeah. Each time there's sort of this question of, have you looked at? And you're the one who's done so much mobile development in that space. I mean, I think a lot of folks have just never taken it out for a spin. Yeah, you know, I think now is an amazing time because, you know, Xamarin has evolved into .NET MAUI, targeting mm -hmm. even more platforms, sharing more code, um, unifying the hot reload experience, the XAML experience for developers, just the entire experience end to end. I think what's so great nowadays is that it's just a single checkbox. Like you just go into Visual Studio right. when you're going to install it. It's like, what would you want to do, right? And there's like web and there's game stuff. And there's like, oh, multi-platform. Now, right. multi-platform nowadays isn't just, you know, uh, iOS, Android, it's Mac, it's Windows, it's yeah. actually sharing code with, let's say, a Blazor website to do sure. Blazor hybrid development. Like, it's more than just what you would think traditionally of just building a single app. It's, it's, it's crafting these experiences across the operating systems, and it's just a checkbox. And that gives you everything that you possibly need. You're done. You're done. You're, you're, you're done, right? And what's great is that it's even faster than ever because the team optimize that experience and will load things on demand. So if you want to start Android development later, they're not going to download all that stuff for you. No. They'll download it when you need it. Absolutely. So it makes it really easy to get started. So like the thing I tell people is it's always like the best time to start becoming a yeah. mobile and multi-platform development. What really truly is to go in, you just check a checkbox and you just say file new and you just have like an Android app running on your Windows machine. You can connect over to your Mac and like a simulator will pop up or you can just plug in an iPhone. You can yeah. plug your iPhone from your pocket into your Windows machine. It pops up in Visual Studio and you've logged into your Apple developer account and you just hit debug and it just It's appears on the phone. <laughs> and then better yet is like the experience as a developer, that loop, right? is the team is like, well, not everyone has 18 monitors, right? Yeah. I travel with my Surface laptop all the time. Yep. 
you get a live preview directly inside of Visual Studio. You're writing code, hit and save, it updates. It's just a wonderful experience. So like I think about what you're talking about is like, well, what does it look like now today? It's like it's a it's a revolutionary experience to me. Yeah. And yet it still reminds me of the days when I first got started. It was yeah. a magical experience, which was, oh, I can go in, I just create an Android app. And like it's there, it's running, yeah, you're off but own. it's so seamless. I think that's what's that's really the big joys. improvement. So clearly, multi-platform apps important to you. Anything else you're working on as well? Is that all your time these days? Well, you know, I think about it as there's more than just your mobile app that you're running, your desktop apps. There's backends, there's websites, there's serverless components, there's database integrations, all that stuff. And to me, I'm running all that, all in C Sharp, all in Visual Studio. So when I open my solution, it's not that I just see my down in Maui project there, right. so that I see my entire solution, yeah. right? And that's what I love about Visual Studio, is I can then seamlessly be debugging my backend, my mobile applications are all working together. I can easily deploy them, easily up to Azure, to the app stores, wherever I need to be them. And that's like my joyous experience, is it's a full package solution. I think people that use Studio all the time forget it's a really great project manager, right? Yeah. That there's all these pieces just working together and you can click on the profiler and watch it flow between them and see where the choke points are and tune stuff up. Like It's easy to forget how much power we have available to us. It truly is. And all those debugging features are just working seamless. And to me, that's what's, what's really great. It's awesome. That power you have for all of your projects. Right. Well, we got to cut it there. I encourage folks, check that box. Try multi-platform <laughs> development. And thanks so much for watching this series. And thank you, James. Absolutely. We'll see you next time.